Kelly's here. What just quickly, um, because you have the link to social, is that usually recommended to share to to share the campaigns to social? Mm -hmm. I uh, too many windows open. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when I'm on. Yeah. One minute warning. <laughs> oh, let me I have time to pile my nose. No. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Well, that, that actually ties into another question I have, and I don't, this might, again, be something that we have to figure out on our own, but with this, with the, the voter voice campaign, is there a way to- like, Who am I hearing? Do so who's, who's talking? Donations. Marjorie's got to mute herself, but she's not muted. Oh, Roger? Marjorie. I got oh, it. Oh, Marjorie. I got it. You got her? Okay. Well, there's a lot of Gail Reed Barnett's here. <laughs> All right, you're on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, to school counselors from upstate New York to downstate New York. Um, first and foremost, I want to welcome our president, Miss Kelly Whitney Rivera. Hello. Um, this evening we have uh, a wonderful presentation by Mr. Coleman. Unlocking the door. Hold on, I have to move. Oh, okay. Unlocking the door. Uh, re regarding union apprenticeships. Uh, next slide. Okay, Mr. Coleman, Tim Coleman is a recruitment and outreach specialist for UA Road Sprinkler. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask everyone to mute themselves kindly, please. Thank you. Uh, Fitter Local 669, Local 669 gas 15,000 members in 48 states and has been around since 1915. Sprinkler fitters are often called iron firefighters and are specialized pipe fitters that installs, test, inspect, and maintain life safety fire suppression systems. Okay, so I don't know what that was, but kindly, Bob, if anybody needs muted, can you mute them? Mr. Yes, Coleman, I, um, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Coleman at the New York State School Council Association conference that we had in November. Um, he was very informative, very enlightened. Um, counselors, you know, sometimes our students may not want to um, go on to college, but Mr. Coleman has uh, a different ideas on how to get our young people uh, in the workforce. So without further ado, Mr. Coleman, take it away. Thank you. And uh, thanks everybody for being here. Dr. Barnett, thank you for the great introduction. And uh, Ms. Kelly Whitney Rivera, thank you for, for hosting this incredible event. Dr. Rotunda, thank you. Uh, for putting this all together and all the work that you do for, for NISCA. Um, so I'm excited just to create some awareness and, and, and hopefully connect some dots. Uh, I do have a presentation that I would like to uh, share with everyone. I will get into um, a quick agenda. Let's just get set up here. Okay, but I want to start with a joke. Can, there, can, I, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Perfect. So I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the plumber and the doctor. Okay, so here's the situation. Doctor had a plumbing issue. It was a Saturday night, calls a plumber. Plumber shows up, goes upstairs, fixes the issue, comes downstairs, hands the doctor the invoice. The 
doctor looks at the invoice, looks at the plumber and says, oh my God, I've never made this much money before in my life as a doctor. The plumber looked at the doctor and she said, I didn't either when I was a doctor. So the point of that quick little introduction is I, I want to just convey that you don't fail into construction. It is another opportunity for your students to find their path and to find their journey. Uh, so I'm gonna kick off just with that, talking about plumbers on a Saturday night and plumbers that work in our I hospitals. Am a uh, just I a am quick a introduction. I am saving lives. I love what I do. I'm achieving my goals, earning free college credits, securing my future, protecting the health and safety of our nation, working for great pay and benefit with incredible opportunities. I'm in the best career, a career with a purpose, and I know I am making a difference. I am. I am. I am. I'm building my future, and you can too. So this presentation is for everyone. So as, uh, as I was introduced, my name is Tim Coleman. I'm with UA Local uh, 669. We are sprinkler fitters and we're not talking um, lawn sprinklers. Uh, we're talking sophisticated piping systems. Over the next few minutes or so, I wanna talk some terminology that maybe you've heard before and, and kind of break that code. I wanna talk a little bit about the roots of the union building trades where we came from, why we became strong, why we need to stay strong. Uh, I'm going to break down the building and construction trade structure because it can get really, really confusing. I'm going to talk basic apprenticeship basics. So some terminologies, how do they work? Uh, what we offer under our collective bargaining agreement. I'm going to talk a little bit about the sprinkler fetter trade, how to apply and what resources are available for students. And that's really the key thing is usually after this presentation, everyone says, I love it. How can I get in? So I wanna just share some, some different pathways for all the trades to connect the dots. Uh, but a little bit about me, I'm with uh, 669, which is the sprinkler fitters. Uh, you probably see the sprinkler heads everywhere that you look or after this presentation, you're going to be looking for them. There's actually 2,000 different types of sprinkler heads. We work with large pipe. Schedule 40 pipe is 8-inch pipe. These are piping systems. And you can see in the, in the pump room some of the, the pumps and the generators and the size of the pipe. As we look to the left here, this gentleman's walking down uh, a, a data server center. And if you were like me, you've probably dropped your, maybe not, hopefully not. You, hopefully you haven't dropped your phone in the toilet before, but I have numerous times. And I know what happens, right? The phone doesn't work. So imagine if we are suppressing a fire in a data server center, maybe at a, couple, a company like Apple, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's Google. Maybe it's down on Wall Street. Maybe it's New York State. Maybe it's the federal government or the entire banking system. So imagine if we suppressed a fire in that server room or that server campus, we would destroy the assets. So this is where we're using gas to eliminate oxygen to suppress the fire. This photo that we're looking at with all the cranes, that's really out, that's outside of Pittsburgh. That's just a couple of years ago. That's three years ago. So that refinery uh, is operational now, and there's probably 50 cranes in the air. Uh, and, you, and there's some really cool timeline videos where you can show your students in warp time speed how one of these uh, massive uh, mega projects is constructed. But if you remember, or if you're at the middle school level, when you have the fire department come in and they did that class on fire extinguishers, and remember when they talked about kitchen fires when you use water fire extinguisher on a kitchen fire not a good idea because it spreads out the oil and grease right it makes the fire worse so imagine if we use water to suppress a fire at a petrochemical facility or an airport or in today's world in 2023 massive growth in the electric vehicle industry 
If you put water on lithium, lithium batteries, it's going to blow up. It's going to continue to burn. So we're putting in CO2 and foam systems. So it's not just that typical sprinkler head that you see. This is actually a pump room at a Tesla plant uh, gigafactory, one of 125 pump rooms at a facility in Round Rock, Texas. And I got to visit that when I was in Austin for the National uh, School Counselors Association Conference. Here's another example of a pump room. So you can see the point here is it's big pipes, right? We're fitting pipe, right? We're specialized pipe fitter. This is a closed piping system. And this really quick is basically how it works. There's a fire in a room that's sprinkled and that fire is gonna heat up that little chemical in that sprinkler head, that common chemical, that common sprinkler head. There's a chemical reaction, glass, break because of the chemical reaction and the expansion and the valve opens up and the water will continue to flow. So the burn trailer that we're looking at now is going to burn. It's not sprinkled. We're going to have to wait for the fire department to show up, right? Typically, the fire department's going to take 15 minutes to maybe 20 minutes to get on the scene. So we are called the Iron Firefighters because we're there before the first responders get there. 60 second about 90 percent in this video and clip is from a nasa facility where we are testing one of those sophisticated foam systems we have 60 seconds for the foam to reach the wing of the aircraft so think of all the massive infrastructure in the energy industry oil and gas that we need to have proper fire suppression systems that were installed properly and are and are inspected all right that's pretty cool We typically go in, if anyone's from Buffalo, this is the University of Buffalo Medical Center, we typically go in before the sheet metal workers go in. And as I fly the drone, you're gonna see the duct work from the sheet metal workers is being installed and you also see our piping system uh, that has already been installed. It's overhead work. But I think just importantly is you can see that we're not just screwing in these sprinkler heads, we're installing an actual system. And you can see there's all kinds of pipe, header pipes that have branch lines that are coming off. You can see some pipes are bigger than others. It's to ensure that every single part of this building, in this case the hospital, has proper fire protection. Not only for the patients, but also for the equipment. See these pipe hangers that are hanging down? That's, that's going to hold the pipe up. Overhead work, it's up high, right? A lot of lifts that you see out there on this construction site. We also have to go back, test, maintain, and inspect these systems. This is a Taiwanese semiconductor uh, fab out in uh, Chandler, Arizona. So when we go back, test, inspect, and maintain, we're, we're one of the trades that's typically always working. Uh, speaking of Tesla, in that facility that's just right outside of Austin, we put in 96,000 sprinkler heads and over 25 miles of pipe in that 5.8 million square foot facility. That is just one of I'm, dozens and dozens of mega projects. And the amount of mega projects that, um, that are coming to New York State uh, that Senator Schumer um, and, and, and the work uh, that he did with the CHIP bill uh, is really going to change the landscape, especially in upstate New York and, and, and areas in New York that drastically uh, you know, need the growth that's, that's coming. We are a little different than other union building trade locals in that we are what's called a road local. So we don't just have jurisdiction in a multiple counties or in a city. We have jurisdiction nationwide. Uh, we have jurisdiction in 48 states. We've been around since 1915. We have 15,000 women and men. We have 52 training instructors that train in 40 locations across the country. We will grow by 2,000 members in the next two years, primarily because of the growth in the semiconductor industry and the electric vehicle industry. We are part of a bigger organization. So I wanna talk structure. So Local 669 is part of a bigger entity. 
So that's like your teacher's union chapter is part of a state chapter, and then the state chapter is part of the national chapter, right? There's a bigger organization, and as you go up, each organization has different responsibilities. And when you go all the way to the top, maybe their main focus is on legislation. Maybe their main focus is on, um, you know, working with, um, like, like the teachers do a great job of working with legislators and carving policy. At the local level, we're the you know we're on the execution phase. Our international does a lot of work with training. So our international is called the United Association, and that stands for the United Association of Welders, Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Steam Fitters, HVAC Refrigeration Tax, and Sprinkler Fitters, commonly called the UA. The UA is the pipe trades. The UA has been around since 1879, has 369,000 members in 300 locations, and is represented by 225 affiliate locals that are self-autonomous, self-ruling all across North America. Right. So the point here is that local 669 members are part of a bigger organization. Right, 359,000 members. Now the UA in New York State has 12 locals. So here's the map of New York, right? So we have 12 locals. All the way out west, there's local 22. And I mentioned, you know, most locals have jurisdiction in multiple counties. So you could see that in the color shading of the map. And you can, you can see, see what I mean by that. Local 13 in Rochester, 81, Canadian border through Pennsylvania. And then we work our way east. And then you can see the great local one, which is down in New York City and local 638 in New York. Uh, and then lo local 200 is also in Long Island. Local 669 does not have jurisdiction in Florida, Hawaii, and 13 cities. Typically those cities that we don't have jurisdiction are older cities that were established before we were created or before we, we before we came about, so before 1915. So Local 638 is a blended local, that's the steam fitters, pipe fitters, and sprinkler fitters in New York City that has jurisdiction in the boroughs in Long Island. They've been around since the 1800s, and they certainly are not going to give up uh, the jurisdiction in that particular market. So 669 has jurisdiction everywhere north of the Bronx, throughout upstate New York, and then also in 47 other cities. We are in a lot of cities, such as Portland, Denver, Phoenix, Atlanta, Charlotte, Nashville, but there are 13 cities that we're, we don't have jurisdiction. Okay, so let's keep moving with the structure. The structure. So the Tim, Tim, locals, yes. Can we take one quick break? Can you unshare for a second? Absolutely. And, and, and reshare because there's this weird thing on the screen. Okay. Okay, give it give it a try. Huh. I maybe it's my computer. I see this these black boxes at the top of the screen. But How are we doing? Ahead. Can everyone see this uh, yeah. little house? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um so the local 669, part of a bigger organization, that's our international, the United Association. Now the big umbrella is called the North American Building Trades Union. And that's 3 million workers across North America. So let's think about, we're gonna build a school. We're gonna build a commercial building. And there are a number of trades that are involved. So a trade is a specialty, it's a craft. There's actually 43 trades or crafts. So think about um, think about a school counselor goes and they get their undergraduate degree, right? So there's a whole bunch of school counselors and now they go on to get their master's degree and they specialize. And they specialize maybe in um, early childhood development or they specialize and they become a school counselor um, that is working in a BOCES, that is working in a technical school. The trades are crafts, are specialties, 
and there's 43 of them represented by 15 internationals. So usually one of the first trades on the job site is the operating engineers. That's the heavy equipment operators. They're also crane operators. There's a separate trade to be a surveyor. The electricians, a lot of folks know about the electricians, but maybe you didn't know that there's three pathways. You could be low voltage, which is working telecom. You could be outside wire, which is working maybe for uh, Con Edison, NYSIG, working for National Grid, or you could be inside wire. The Teamsters, a portion of the Teamsters are in the building trades because they bring the product to and from the job site, the bricklayers and masons. There's crafts or trades for brick, block, tile multiple crafts and trades. The elevator constructors, they are a multi-craft trade and they're doing electrical work, they're doing mechanical work, they're doing fabrication, they're building cabinets, they're doing repair and inspections, right? So those are individuals, they're involved in just about everything. The allied uh, trades, which is the painters and glazers, multiple pathways, being a bridge painter, being a ship painter, uh, being a glazer, which is working with glass, being a wallpaper, those are crafts or trades that the painters and allied trades change, are, are, are trained. Layuna is the laborers union, right? 500,000 members nationwide, and they're involved in every single aspect of the job site. The plasters and the cement masons, smart is the sheet metal and rail and transportation workers. Right, so they do a lot of the duct work. They're also fabricating a lot of, um, you know, you're seeing uh, maybe turbines for offshore, right? So they could be involved in that. We talked about the UA, which is the pipe trades, the roofers and waterproofers. And when we talk union roofers, we're not talking shingles. We're talking sophisticated systems. We're talking water reuse systems. We're talking applying roofing material that is net carbon zero. So these are high tech systems in the construction in the year 2023. Uh, the boiler makers are also um, shipbuilders as well. Uh, the heat and frost insulators. Uh, the, if you want to weld pipe, you join the UA. If you want to weld structurally, then you join the iron workers. And then the carpenters union, uh, which is not part of the North American building trades union, but we do work together. Uh, they broke off an, an, a number of years ago uh, from, from NAP to. So this is what we do. So the crafter trade is the specialty. As you know, Unions is not what we do. Unions is who we are. So we're in the people business. So I think it's really important, and I'm going to shut this video off halfway through, but to really understand where we came from. And that the comes from the Garment Shirtwaist Triangle Sherways Fire. It was a man-made disaster, a tragedy of the industrial age, made all the worse because it could have been prevented. Let me set the scene. New York City, early 20th century. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory occupied several floors of a Manhattan business building called the Ash Building. It was located just off Washington Square Park, one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the city. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory was, by almost any definition, a sweatshop. It was a densely packed place. Some 500 people worked there. And the work schedule was punishing. 11 to 12 hours a day, every day. Most of the people employed at the factory were young immigrant women, teenagers even, who didn't speak English. These women sat at long tables, day in, day out, sewing shirtwaists. Shirtwaists were mass-produced blouses. They resembled men's shirts and were very popular with working women. So here's what happened. March 25th, 1911, Saturday evening, the end of the workday, the work week. A fire started in a bin of cotton scraps, perhaps from a cigarette butt. A manager tried to use a hose to put it out, but the hose valve was rusted shut and the hose itself was rotted away. The factory floor didn't have a sprinkler system, so the fire spread quickly. People panicked. The building had only one flimsy fire escape and it wasn't nearly big enough. It collapsed. The building had four elevators, but only one was working and it only held 12 people at a time. It managed to make four rescue trips before it broke down. Some desperate workers jumped to their deaths down the elevator shaft. Workers tried to take the stairs, but the exit doors only opened inward and they were kept locked by factory management. Many people were crushed to death trying to get out. Firefighting technology hadn't caught up to the new tall buildings of a city like New York. The fire hoses and ladders could only reach the seventh floor, one floor short of the fire. Dozens of desperate workers jumped. 
So that happened in 1911. Um, my friend, Dr. Marianne Trishiani, she's the chair of uh, labor relations at Hofstra University. She's also the executive director of Remember the uh, Garment Triangle Shirtwaist Fire and the Triangle Shirtwaist Memorial. That building's owned by NYU today. And there was 146 young women that died in 18 minutes in that fire. It was the worst workplace disaster up until 9-11. After, two days after, there was a protest of about 385,000 people. And enough was enough because people were not only dying in, in factories, they were dying in mines. And this really was the growth of labor unions and it was the, it was the start of the sprinkler fitters, really. It was the passing of New York City passed the Sullivan Huey Fire Act, which required sprinkler systems in, in, in all manufacturing facilities. But also out of there was a woman uh, that led the protests, a woman by the name of Miss Frances Perkins. And she became, as you probably may know, the first uh, woman to hold a uh, position in the cabinet. She was the Secretary of Labor for 12 years under President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Most of child labor laws today, fire codes, minimum wage laws um, were a result and were inked through the efforts of Ms. Frances Perkins. So these are things that the unions really focused on was protecting people, re representing people. It was a sweatshop that occurred in New York City really just a little over 100 years ago today. But there's other things that we do besides protect and safety, and that's train. I don't know if you remember uh, Fast Times right at Ridgemont here, High. Here, here. Sean Penn's first move. My brother's gonna kill us. He's gonna kill us. He's gonna kill you and he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill us. Hey man, just be glad I had fast reflexes. But relax, all right? My old man is a television repairman. He's got this ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. I'm Bob and I'm a plumber. I'm Stan and I'm also a plumber. I can prove it, can you? Sure, I've got all the tools. You like my new plunger? takes more than tools to be a plumber. A eh, nice uniform doesn't hurt. So here's the point out of that. You know, Spicoli, his father was a television repairman, but just because you have that nice set of tools or the nice van doesn't make you a HVAC tech, doesn't make you an iron worker, doesn't make you a sprinkler fitter. What does is training. So this is apprenticeship, right? So there's a couple terms really quick. An apprentice is someone that is, it's an individual that's in training. And what is an apprenticeship? It's a combination of on the job training, which is paid and technical instruction, right? It's the two that go hand in hand. We've been doing this, the unions for over a hundred years. It's a collaboration between organized labor, which is the unions, the contractors or the business owners, and we have training committees. Our curriculum, is registered at the federal and state level. So there's a standard. A student that is graduating from a public school in New York State will get a diploma. That's the gold standard. The gold standard for an apprentice in a trade is to become a journey level worker. So that journey person, that's the subject matter expert. So basically a journey person can work unsupervised and can train apprentices. That's really the definition. Now, remember that I mentioned there's 43 crafts or trades. Some of these trades have two-year apprenticeships, some have three, some are four, and some have five, depending on the trade or depending on the craft. My trade and all of the UA, the pipe trades, are five-year programs. They are earn while you learn. The job site is the classroom. So they're being developed and trained by an apprentice and also a supervisor. We also back that up with classroom training. So some of the trades do block training where they shut down during the winter, as an example, and you go to class you know, for a number of weeks in a row. My trade, we do it every other week, 18 times. So every other week they go to sprinkler fitter class for six hours. So they have to get the number of hours. Now, I want you to just think about this number, and this is staggering. Last year combined, NAPTU, 
right? That's the 15 affiliates invested over $2.55 billion in training and education. That would make us the largest education system in America. And we did that at no cost to the taxpayer. We did that by paying forward for the future through our union dues and also the contractors contributing to that apprenticeship fund. So we're self-funded. Our program works like this. Every six months, as you gain knowledge and, and work experience, that apprentice will pick up rank. So they're going up a ladder. And every rung of the ladder, they're going to get a 5% pay increase until they reach the journey level status. In addition, with the UA and a number of the other trades, our apprentices, once they journey out, will receive 45 college credits at no cost just by doing our program because our curriculum is registered and we have articulation agreements with community colleges throughout the United States like Ivy Tech, um, uh, Washtenaw Community College which is next to the Labor College in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, um, here's another one of my favorite films of all time, Matrix One. Maybe my favorite this scene. Your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. He took the red pill because he wants the truth, right? And if you're like me, sometimes you learn the truth by unlearning what you thought was true or what you were told was true. Here's an example. And maybe you've heard this or maybe you heard this personally. The only way to be successful is to get a white collar job and a four year degree. That's the blue pill. It's not the only way. There are other pathways where you can reach success. Trades are not for everybody, but college isn't for, for everyone either. And the trades are available to everyone. So it's just that personal, that personal preference or that personal pathway that they want to choose. Now, here's something that, you know, as I talk to school counselors and, you know, we work, um, you know, together is there's this phenomenon called the summer melt in Harvard University. They did a study that showed that uh, there's a number of high schools that have as much as 50 percent and some high schools are as, you know, as low as 19. So between 19 to 50 percent of high school graduates that say that they're going to go to college never step foot on the college campus and higher education they are terrified by that number of summer melt, right? So they never make it. And we know that only about 33% are going on to get that degree. So what about those that got caught up in the summer melt where they found that their, their friend went off in the military, or their friend went to university or went to school or is working and they're stuck, right? So a lot of times they get lost. They get lost on that lonely road, right? So this is another opportunity to reach individuals to share with him that you don't fail into construction. This is another great pathway. And we have room on our bus. You know, as you hear from other um, uh, sectors in our economy, the silver tsunami, those baby boomers that are retiring, and it's going to happen and it's going to happen fast. I mentioned that the UA is a 359,000 members, about 78% of our membership is over the age of 53. We're just one particular, that's one international, right? There's 3 million workers out there. So the students today, the individuals today have more opportunity for these great careers. And we don't want them to get stuck. We don't want them to take an exit or a detour where they get stuck in minimum wage careers. 
right? And that's a detour. 50% of women and people of color are employed in low wage industries today. The average minimum wage, the average age of minimum wage workers in America today is 35. It's not the high school teenager that's working at, at, you know, in fast food. The average age of minimum wage workers today is 35, right? And that just doesn't make sense to me, right? So in addition to representation for safety, for jobs um, and work environment, like we had during the Garment Triangle Sherways fire, we also focus on, as you know, as members of your union, the collective bargaining agreement. Right. And it's so important today because we know in the last 20 years, the cost of rent, groceries, health care, the technology has gone through the roof. And then here comes the pandemic that shut the world down. And I don't even know what to put on that slide anymore because of inflation. But wages haven't kept up. That's the problem. You know, the top 10 percent of earners over the last 20 years, the wages have gone up 33 percent. The top 50 percent, they've only gone up 14 and if you're in the bottom 10%, the wages have gone up less than 5%, and the cost of living has gone up over 30%. So under our collective bargaining agreement, right, we focus on three things, living wage, benefits for our members and families, and the opportunity to retire with dignity. I love showing this slide to students, and I talk about really the importance of unions. If you've ever had a chance to go out to the Pacific Northwest and seen the sequoia trees, they're the 36 stories high. It's the oldest living thing on earth. Been around for thousands of years. And it was, I was so impressed when I saw it that I, I did some research and the root systems are not deep. They only go down five feet. So how the heck do they stay, stay upright and weather the storms? The root systems go out and they're intertwined and the trees support each other. And that's what unions do. So our members are not standing by themselves. They have something behind them. And that's why I shared those big numbers, like 15,000 part of a bigger organization than part of the North American Building Trades Union, right? We support each other. So our roots are broad. So this is Capital District, okay? Uh, so to really just kind of cut into this. In the Capital District, after the first year, so this is down to Kingston. Uh, our first year apprentices will be earning $22.61 an hour. And I have some slides that show other parts of the state. Second year, because there's a 5% increase every six months, they'll be at $26.76. Third year, $30.92 an hour. That's the wage. Fourth year, $35.08. Fifth year, $37. Journey rate, $41.56. Right, so that's in the capital district. Now you look at this one slide here where I have it annualized, all right? After the first year, 47,000 on up to a journey level worker where they're at 86,444, right? So the average dual income family income, the average for a dual earning in family, their income, I'm still not saying it right, but hopefully you're mopping what I'm spilling. Two family house, their average income in the United States is $50,000. So here's an opportunity that in the first year, our apprentices are getting close to that. All right, so what are other exits and detours? Not having benefits. So under collective bargaining, we fight for our members to have medical, dental, vision, prescription, and eyeglass benefits. So when the unions talk about our wage rate is $42 an hour, they're talking about that's what's in the check. The benefits are on top of it. So our apprentices and our journey level workers don't have to pay for their benefits. Third thing we fight for is the opportunity to retire with dignity. And the only thing better than one retirement fund is having more than one. We have two. Here's the first one. Our members will get $135 a month for every year they work. So if someone comes right out of school and they work for 40 years, that's $5,400 a month they're gonna get $64,800 a year in retirement. If they live for another 20 years, that, that right in today, right today, because that 135 is only gonna go up under the next contract, right? This is the current contract. But over a lifespan in retirement of 20 years, that pension's worth close to $1.3 million. The second is assist 
we call it assist. It's like a 401k. So the contractors, in, and this is the capital region, so it's actually more downstate. But in the capital region, the contractors contribute $7.30 an hour into our members' 401k. We call it the SIS. You do the math on that, over 40 years, that yearly contribution of $15,184 is over six hundred grand. With a compounding interest rate of 7%, which is the average retirement return, that baby grows to over $3 million. You don't fail into construction. These are game changers. That's why Cornell University cited in the Wall Street Journal five years ago, the number one pathway into the middle class over the last 100 years has been union apprenticeship programs. Another way to look at this is when our apprentices graduate, or I'm sorry, when our apprentices' peers graduate from college, the apprentice will be earning $72,000 in the capital district, and they have earned close to $240,000, and they haven't incurred any debt. What, what, what now, you can I see my age, because all these video you. clips are uh, pretty Very dated. Personal. Very important thing. This is, I think, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s first first video, first film. This is the capital region up top, 1870s, the base. Show me the money. Journey rate, 4156, benefit package, 2731. You see central New York, southern tier, and western New York, wages a little bit lower than the capital region. Starts at 1830. Journey rate. Family journey rate is that's a typo the journey rate is uh 40 central new york it's 40 dollars and, and 40 dollars and 36 cents and then newburgh south down to yonkers the journey rate's 52 dollars and 67 cents an hour Okay, but it's more than the money, right? And that's what, you know, when you talk to young individuals, they love using their hands. They like having that sense of accomplishment, right? Especially what, you know, I mean, the pandemic threw us all upside down, but those CTE programs are still going strong. Those students were still going in the classroom. They're going in the labs. They were welding. They were working, you know, in HVAC. They were working in cosmetology. You know, they were still doing it during the pandemic, and they had a sense of accomplishment, that pride. And, it, and it's worthwhile work. You know, we're putting in fire suppression systems and assisted living centers and airports. Think about how important it is for that HVAC, heating, ventilation, refrigeration tech, to put in a ventilation system in a public school during the middle of an airborne disease called coronavirus. How important was that? right? Essential workers on the front lines. Or how is it important that we are building solar farms? We are using recycled material. We are building um, electric vehicle facilities all over the country, you know, to, to impact a greater good. So there's a big sense of pride of that. So I've got a short video. I want you just to, to see some of the size and scope of these mega projects because these are coming to New York State. Right, so this is Intel out in Portland, Hillsboro. This is also where Nike is headquartered. Massive. This is out in Phoenix, Arizona, one of the fastest growing cities in America. Every chip manufacturer um, you don't really is building a, out a there. Glimpse of the scale. Uh, this is inside an Intel facility, a chip plant. Until you're in, We're building a $100 billion dollar Intel and facility says, in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio. Is going to be even bigger. Ford Motor Company outside of Memphis is building Blue Oval City. 100% green energy. In Kentucky, we're building two coal electric battery vehicles plants in partnership battery with recycling. SK Innovation. Battery production will happen out of that facility, and this is the Tesla. Uh, it's outside of Austin, Texas. It doubled the capacity and production of electric vehicle batteries in the world just with this one build. And this is Micron in Syracuse, as is the architectural renderings. Battery comes to bolster the semiconductor. 
So it's, you know, it's helping our students find their truth. And these opportunities are out there. Uh, and it is an alternative. The school isn't for everybody. I think I got caught up in it where society was like, college, college, college. You have to go to college. If you want to be successful, you have to go to college. I'm $60,000 in debt, and I could have joined this trade out of high school and been debt-free, earned while I learned. Uh, since I've become a union member, is I'm a part of something bigger than myself. Um, you know, when you're non-union, you're, you're always concerned about where the next job is coming from, how you're gonna pay for your health care, retirement, your benefits. Everything is on your shoulders solely and completely. It's been a world of a difference between non-union and union, just in terms of work environment, um, the safety culture, and not to mention better pay with the union, the benefits package with the health care and the services that they offer. Well, as a minority in the labor union, there's no limit to what you can make. There's no limit to where you can go in the field and it's not like there's a ceiling when you get in it's like all right you start at the bottom now go up so we need journey level workers we need supervisors we need union officials because everybody's going to be retiring and then our members can also own their own company they become member owners they can become branch managers they can become designers and project managers so there is a pipeline that goes beyond that hey i'm going to carry my my toolbox uh you know for the rest of my career so there's a ton of opportunity that the we school have if someone told we have had in the ua a 78 percent increase of women coming into the into the pipe trades in the last two years. We're very, very proud of that. Every year, the North American Building Trades Union has a conference called Trades Women Build Nations. This year it happened in Las Vegas. Uh, I attended a couple years ago, it was in Chicago. Rahm Emanuel was the keynote speaker. There's 5,000 women that come to this Trades Women Build Nation every single year. So the sisters in our brotherhood are, they've got a, tremendous caucus they're in leadership roles i get to co-teach out in ann arbor michigan with doreen cannon she's the president of local 55 in cleveland uh, and there's a bunch of sisters that are sprinkler fitters that we're going to see in this video here really quick told me construction was a man's job i would say what i've always said which is absolutely not women can do anything a man can do i can do anything a man can do anything that my brothers or my dad could do i can do it just as well, as, if not better. It seems like there's more and more of us out there, and I think that it's awesome for women to work with their hands and, and use their minds in different ways. All across the nation, infrastructure, property, and lives are protected thanks to the work of well-trained and high- So I'm gonna show you where the link is on that, but I wanted to get in um, just to gaining access to some resources and answer some questions. For Local 669, we interview four times a year in New York State. And we do that in Newburgh, we do that in Latham, we do that in Syracuse, and then we do that either in Buffalo uh, or in Rochester. Um, there's a process. Uh, I will help individuals with their interview prep. You know, it's public information. I'm gonna show you what they're gonna be evaluated on really quick. Uh, but the videos that we watch, Training 669, the Women in Construction, Day in the Life, these are resources that are on that link, training669.org. So one of the questions that, that I always I always get is, okay, well, how do we prepare them? You know, what makes a good tradesperson? Because there is a there is a um, there is an evaluation, and this comes from New York State Department of Labor, where we evaluate in our interviews in New York. Uh, really three main buckets, educational achievement. So we're looking for technical education and they're going to get points. So this is like going mini golfing, but you don't want the lowest score. You want the highest score. Um, so let's say someone went to BOCES or they went to uh, Farmingdale State or they went to SUNY Delhi or they went to Alfred State and they took one of the applied technologies. They get credit for that, right? And they're going to get points for that. We also evaluate work experience. So if someone has trade related work experience, they're going to get, you know, three points for every year that they have. If they have any general work experience, they're going to get points for that. 
And then we have an oral interview, willingness to accept obligation, travel. Um, you know, big thing for us is not being afraid of heights. So they get ranked, they get points. There's a rank sheet. It goes back to the Department of Labor and all the trades have this evaluation. They have standards. And then when a contractor has a need, we start at the top of the list and we work our way down. Right. Um, CTE programs. Um, I was in Liverpool. High, I've been in Liverpool High School three times in the last probably five weeks. There are five seniors in their building trade CTE program, but they have 85 in their sophomore class, 85, and they have a waiting list. They have a principal for CTE. The Board of Education has gone all in. They're moving their CTE program to another building. I participated last week in an open house for eighth graders and ninth graders where the, those students and their parents went to these classrooms. And there was myself and the IBEW, we were there to answer questions and really to support the Liverpool High School CTE program. We do trade visits, we do open houses at training centers. I'm involved in mock interviews. Uh, there's tremendous mock interviews that happen every single year at the Watertown Airport where there's 40 school districts come in and there's 62 companies from various industries that help those students prepare for mock interviews. There are adult BOCI programs across the state. There's EOC. Uh, there's one in Troy that's phenomenal. There's one in Syracuse. So anyone that has a, this helps them get points. And that's why I'm sharing with this. These are resources. Go to a BOCES, you know, get in the CTE program in your school. And there are incredible CTE programs across, across our state. Volunteer, get hand tool experience, work at Habitat for Humanity. There are also pre-apprenticeship programs that some of these are direct entry. In Rochester and Albany, there's a pre-apprenticeship program that my friend Kareem Berry, who's from Brooklyn, he's an IBEW lineman, retired, now he's given back. MAP is Multicraft Apprenticeship Preparedness Program. It's direct entry. Last week, uh, two individuals, um, Jerome, who graduated from Albany, and Romario, who graduated from, from Green Tech, um, they entered in. It took them two weeks to get in. They were direct entry. They're on a job site today. They started on a job site last Tuesday. Right? Uh, there's a number of individuals that I'm working with in the Rochester market. Kareem just was in the news today with the mayor of Binghamton. He is starting a third pre-apprenticeship program in the Binghamton market. Uh, yesterday, I helped the Pathways into Apprenticeship in the Syracuse market conduct interviews. Uh, we held interviews at the Iron Workers local. So again, these are pathways into great careers and pathways out of poverty. Uh, New York City has probably the best programs in the, in the country. There's alternative new employment for women out of New York City. That's a new there's New York City construction skills program. There's also building works and there's tremendous programs that are out on the island. There is a ton of applied technology schools that students can look at like Alfred State. When I go to their career fairs at Alfred State, Alfred State places 99% of their students into great careers. There's literally a hundred vendors or a hundred companies from the Northeast that are fighting for these students. It's incredible. SUNY Delhi has great applied technology programs. Mohawk Valley Community College has a program with Piedmont Airlines. If someone wants to be a jet mechanic and earn 45 bucks an hour, Mohawk Valley is a great resource. Hudson Valley Community College has great programs. M Monroe County, Erie County, Rockland County. Um, you know, the military is an option. There's 43 building trade crafts. There's 43 crafts or trades in the building trades. There are 143 MOSs in the military. So 143 crafts or trades or specialties. So that's a pathway where a young individual, you know, can, can develop and, and to get some subject matter expertise. So what are we looking for? You know, things that we look for all the trades, the soft skills, being on time, asking questions, a great attitude, a work ethic. It's hard work. We want our contractors to succeed. If they don't succeed, we don't succeed. So we work jointly with our contractors. As I mentioned, we interview four times a year. Uh, we also enter into individuals through our direct entry programs. Uh, 
uh, uh, multi-craft apprenticeship uh, preparedness program is one of them. Pathways into apprenticeship is another one. Helmets to hard hats with our veterans is another one as well. Uh, some trades will interview every other year. Some start their apprenticeship once a year. So they're collecting resumes, but they only start their apprenticeship once a year. We have in a couple trades, like the laborers union, has what's called open enrollment. As long as we have them on the list, our contractor at any time can hire them. Okay, um, and there's a process with that that starts at training669.org. If someone wants to travel with us, they can travel and we can start them in two weeks because we can register them out of state. And when they, they travel, they're gonna get 805 a week in per diem and they're gonna work guaranteed 10 to 20 hours of overtime. Those young men that I mentioned out of Albany, within two and a half years before they're 21 years old, they're going to be banking in their check over $110,000. I mean, it's, it's a total game changer. And they're working on mega projects. I mean, they're just gung-ho. They went through Kareem's program. Um, they went through a pathway program with him. He calls Phoenix. It's kind of a pathway into adulthood. Uh, it's just a tremendous program. So here's a resource. As I mentioned, we don't have jurisdiction in Long Island or, or in the boroughs. We have in New York State, the New York State Building Trades Council. And established in 1958, uh, New York State represents over 200,000 unionized construction workers in New York State. There are 12 district councils and state associations and 135 local unions. So you're going to want to connect with your district council. And that's that website right there, newyorkbuildingtrades.com. And then the North American Building Trades, um, which is collectively, that's the big baby. This is a resource for all the trades and it lists every single trade. It also lists our multi craft core our multi-core craft curriculum which is mc3 the number of new york city schools have that program number of program number of schools in california state of minnesota uh, have mc3 programs you know which is a collaboration with the north american building trades there's math assessment tools that are on there and i'm going to try to open this up if I can, okay, cannot from the slideshow, but we'll go back to nap2.org because I want to show that if we have time. But here's my contact information. I'm available for regional uh, NISCA meetings. Um, I, we, I cannot go to Long Island. I can't go in the city because we don't have jurisdiction there. Um, but I can help point you in the right direction. That's really through that uh, New York State Building Trades uh, website. And that's the last slide that I have. So we do have just a few minutes for, for questions. And uh, uh, yes, I do attend high school career fairs. I'm going to raffle through these really quick. I absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm at BOCES in Batavia, and I'm speaking in front of Green Tech in Albany on Friday, and I'm bringing my friend Kareem with me because that's, I think it's important that we continue to collaborate, and that's a big part of my outreach. Um, IEP 504 able to go into apprenticeship? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the difference between union and non-union, right? Is that, you know, what's in our charter and how we're registered, right? So that's a, that's a big part of what we do, but the individuals have to be physically able to do the job, right? And there's this, you know, there's safety, um, uh, you know, there's also, you know, other, other modifications that we certainly will make, um, uh, but with benefit, yeah, e, uh, is that East Syracuse BOCES, ESM? E Eastern Suffolk BOCES. Eastern Suffolk, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, high school events, New York City. Um, the, only re the only way I can do a, high, a, a Zoom meeting in Long Island be if someone wanted to be interested in traveling. They, they would work out of state because we do not have jurisdiction in Long Island or New York City. But if someone wants to travel, 
Um, I'll give you an example. Kareem, that relationship with him has helped me identify and work with a number of young individuals from the Bronx. They're now working in Georgia. And when the Micron and the big facilities happen in New York, they're coming back to New York. Right. So that's a little bit different. It's kind of working around, but typically I don't, I don't work. I, I won't drive. I can't work there. Right. So that's just a jurisdiction. Uh, age limits, no age limits. However, there is one have to be 18. Right. So there is a minimum requirement. Qualifications, GED, high school diploma, 18, physically able to do the work, pass a drug test, pass a physical. Yeah, great question, uh, Alan, a way to explore possible trades. And that's why I listed um, pathways into apprenticeship, alternative new employment for women, New York State build those pre-apprenticeship programs, multi-craft apprenticeship preparedness program. Those are multi-craft, so it gives exposure. And those are great for someone that's young because all the trades typically go to those pre-apprenticeship programs, support, maybe teach a class here, talk about their trade, gain access, come to our training center. Let's do the, you know, let's do the walk around. Uh, let's show you what goes on in our training center. And, and those pre-apprenticeships is kind of that, that avenue to do that. Um, and then also the applied technology programs in like an adult BOCES, an EOC, uh, you know, the CTE programs that I see around the state where they are multi-craft as well, where there's that exposure, there's field trips, you know, a lot of CTE programs, they take their individuals to the training centers, visit a couple of the different uh, unions, get the unions to come in for those, those uh, career fairs, and maybe some of those are hands-on type career fairs and hands-on activities. We have programs like Career Jam in upstate New York uh, that are very hands-on. Um, Okay, I think I'm uh, before they graduate. If so, it, yes, they can definitely interview before they graduate. Absolutely. They can't work before they're 18, but they can definitely interview. And we want to get them in the pipeline, right? So they're starting to prepare themselves. Okay, and I think I've ran out of time. <laughs> Mr. Coleman, I will say excellent, 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 excellent uh, presentation. Um, you've given us a wealth of information. Um, yeah, just send us as much as you can um, through our executive director, Bob Rotunda, and he'll get out the information to the counselors. Right, okay. Bob? Yeah. It, um, you'll send me your PowerPoint, right, Tim? Absolutely. Okay. And I'll get, a, I'll get that information out tomorrow, as well as a link to the video for folks who couldn't make the meeting. Um, and I'm sure, and, and I know this for a fact, um, if you have questions that didn't get answered, Tim will answer them if you, if you email him. Um, he's very good about that. Thank you for your time. Let me put up our PowerPoint. That's the fastest I've ever talked in my life. <laughs> so hopefully I didn't fire hose everybody. The wealth of information. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot in there. Quick question. What, the reason why you, you not in New York City, is it because of education or? No, it just comes down to 638. Okay. It's been around since the 1800s and they're not giving up New York City. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what, it, you know, so we're not in some of the older cities. Like, you know, we're in Portland, mm -hmm. we're in Denver, we're in Nashville. <laughs> and sometimes we get in there because we merge, but in like New York City, it's a blended local. And okay. I know that gets confusing. They're the steam fitters, pipe fitters, and sprinkler fitters. We're okay. just, you know, so they're like, we got it from here. We're good. We're, we're all UA brothers and sisters. We're all part of the same international. Right. I'm, I'm UFT myself. So, and my father always preached union, union, union. Yep. Um, it's good to be in the union. Great pension. Um, again, we thank you, Mr. Coleman. Uh, thank you to the school counselors that have participated today and to my class, 643. Um, I'm Dr. Gary Barnett, not only am I a professor, but I'm also the PD chair, professional development chair. And thanks to our president, um, 
Ms. Kelly, we were able to put this presentation together. Uh, we will be offering more webinars soon. So stay tuned. Um, and thank you again for coming. Thank you, Kathy Corbett, who is our uh, public relations advocacy. You name it, she does it. Who else did I see? <laughs> I saw <laughs> uh, Laura Mesa is there. This is our website. Ray Polk, Ray Polk was here. Ray Polk, I saw Ray. I saw someone, uh, Patrick Kirby. That's I don't know. Bob. I don't know if he's a former student of mine, but um, okay. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And class 643, let's go to class. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.